Hello chestnut friends. Here we're in our Moroni Italian chestnut orchard. Here located in southern Sacramento County. And these trees were originally the colossal variety and in 2007 um, I grafted them over the remainder of the orchard and anyway, went over to these Italian Moroni because I, they grew well for me and I just like the quality better than the colossal. They're a little bit later and they're not as large, but I think the taste is better. And we pick our chestnuts as they fall each day. And we're winding down in most of the orchard, though some parts of the orchard just produce a little bit later than the rest for some reason. In fact, the area that used to be the earliest is now the latest, it seems. but. Um, I don't know if it's because of the figure the trees had early on or what, but just letting them drop on their own isn't always adequate. So um, I've just got one worker harvesting. Now I had him go through with a long bamboo pole that we have just to gently tap the branches. You can see some of the chestnuts up there that you know, they look like they're ready to drop, and sometimes we'll see a chestnut that's just hanging by the tip here. You know, that got tapped just lightly with a bamboo pole. It would drop out there, but there's some that will just hang lightly and stay there for some time without some encouragement with a bamboo pole. We don't shake the trees. Um, people ask sometimes about how we harvest our chestnuts and they are accustomed to walnuts and almond trees and pistachio trees, they shake those, but those are a dry nut and chestnuts are a high moisture nut and they require refrigeration. We don't let them all dry out on the tree. They would be hard as rocks then. Here's an example of what I mentioned, how a chestnut will just hang on and if we just tap this with a bamboo pole it would drop off it's see it's still hanging on there even after I it just hangs on by the tip there sometimes not usually but um, the husk from the chestnut are called a burr there's a lot of burrs on the ground now and it becomes an obstacle for harvesting you can see there are lots of chestnuts there as time allows we end up raking these into the centers and mowing them with a, a flail mower. Um, that flail mower has got these hammer knives on it that will really um, shred up these burrs well. In fact, you can see here's what burrs look like after they've been chopped up a couple of times and when we're all done we'll go over the orchard more times and pulverize it even more. We use a harvesting device called Holtz Nut Wizard. It's modified with a different handle here and have a little attachment to help push things out of the way there. But it's just spring wires and the nut pops inside. You can hold maybe a couple pounds in there. Um, this is almost like a game, huh, Luis? Yep. Yeah, we don't even have to pay our workers here because they like this so much here. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fun wears off pretty um, quickly. In fact, I had a guy that worked for me for a few years and he did not know about. Um, you know, stretching or things like that. Anyway, he uh, actually had a shoulder injury from um, not taking, switching sides and so forth, taking a break, whatever. He would just, we had so many chestnuts falling. Let me go ahead and show them how you dump that in the bucket here. So there's, a, when you buy a Holtz Nut Wizard, they, they are online, I buy large quantities. <laughs> They show that that's a dumper wire. I think for one dollar you get a wire that you can put onto the side of a bucket. It doesn't stay on very well 
on its own when I put a bungee to, to help hold it in. But um, it works out better than having to bend over constantly to pick them up by hand. And the only problem is getting around the burrs. But using our feet is adequate, you know, usually. Um, again, we need to rake this and get the we just we don't use a lot of equipment here for this but i use a, a wagon i got a bigger wagon from tractor supply company and it works out well we can put um three tubs in there in a bucket or two and we can get maybe 300 pounds of chestnuts loaded up in there i do have a small kubota tractor and i do come out keep the worker working and um, I will put the tubs of chestnuts into the loader bucket here and then go off to our pole barn. Um, I call it a pole barn, that's a common term that I think a lot of people know but maybe many people are not familiar but it's not doesn't have walls, it's just got poles holding up um, a roof structure. and. Um, we're in a floodplain. We can't build a new building here very easily without elevating it up in the air and, and all that. Um, but pole barns, since they don't have walls, are exempt from that. Uh, but it serves our needs. You know, it keeps us out of the rain or hot sun. So um, I'll pause here and go back to the pole barn and show how we sort our chestnuts and go on from there. So now we're in the pole barn and we place our tubs of chestnuts. You know, within an hour of being harvested, we are going through the sorting process then. And we've got racks here, some of the small, these are blanks, um, a chestnut that could have been but was never pollinated, apparently. And um, looking for different defects. Um, you know, if it's got a large split on it, we, um, if it's got a s smaller split, I still include that. It's not any harm, just um, mostly attraction. I, I would say that this is okay as a large chestnut. I'd be happy to have that. So just looking for debris and coals. After that, we have a sorter that we um, made ourselves. I had a welding shop weld a frame for me and um, so forth but um, I think this was a 20 inch PVC pipe um, that I drilled a whole bunch of holes in and it starts out with um, let's see I think one two three four twelve rows of um, one and one eighth inch holes anything smaller than that um, I think maybe 50 to a pound. We don't um, sell those. I'm not sure. I, um, I have a friend that helps here on the farm, so I might give them. They're fine to eat, just a lot more work. Then we have um, a series of one and a quarter inch holes. And um, so chestnuts that are larger than one and one eighth inch, but less than one and one quarter inch. Trying to be careful not to make mistakes there. You can go through 12 rows of holes, and if they drop out, these are what we sell as our medium sized chestnut. Then we have a set of one and three eighths inch diameter holes. I had a special need for getting access there. I'd cut out some sets there and glued those back in. But so anything between one and one quarter inch and one and three eighths inch diameter, so it would pass through a one, eighth inch three, one and three eighths inch diameter hole, but had already passed over the one and quarter inch hole. Um, these we sell as our large chestnut. And these are overall, I'd say, our most popular variety and the most that we have. If I was growing, um, I used to grow colossal variety chestnut. On average, those had more large chestnuts 
um, and also more small chestnuts. Um, but I don't grow those anymore. But um, you know, those would generally have a greater percentage of um, large chestnuts, though, if I prune properly. Um, I have room for another set of holes if I wanted to get even further, but I sell three sizes and I think that's enough. Anything that does not pass through a one and three eighths inch diameter hole comes out to the end here. These are three um, useless spirals, but need to get the nuts to the end of the tube here. And so these are what we sell as extra large. They're very large chestnuts. Um, and from there, we simply wash them. I sort through them a little bit too, looking for any defects I may have missed, and there are some, but after that, we um, wash them, and then we um, take them to our walk-in cooler, and we'll go there next. Okay, I'll start outside of our walk-in cooler because it's quite noisy in there. Our walk-in cooler is eight foot wide by 12 inch, 12 foot long, an 8 by 12 walk-in cooler. I'm not sure the ceiling is maybe 7 foot or so. Um, might be 8 foot, I'm not sure. <coughs> anyway, we keep our walk-in cooler at set at a thermostat of 31 degrees. You know, people frequently think of that as freezing, but for chestnuts, that's well above freezing. Um, water freezes at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but chestnuts at 25 to 26 degrees, supposedly. But uh, the colder temperature helps uh, reduce the risk of um, pathogens growing. We um, you know, do wash chestnuts and they're only on the ground for you know, a few hours usually, maybe up to um, 12 hours you know, overnight if it fell late in the day and not until the next day. Anyway, we keep it cold and um, I'll explain the rest when we get inside. So I've got different shelves in here. And yeah, I mentioned earlier that we have the greatest number, you know, of the Moroni coming into the large side. And so here on the left, this is a shelf that doubled deep. Wasn't enough room to put um, two walkways running this direction, so I put this one double deep, and it works out well. So right now there's three rows double deep of uh, the large size Moroni. Here on the right, we've got extra large. We've already sold um, over two double deep rows of um, the Moroni um, just within a few days. Behind us, it's dark, I realize. Um, we have the medium size then, and that's the lowest percentage that we have, and it's a lower um, shelf here, so it doesn't go as high. But I don't always use the whole row of uh, extra large either, and so I'm putting some of the mediums over here now. Now, we wash them, we put, we bag them, um, and we um, let that set out on our shelves by our shorter for um, two to four hours. And after that, we bring them in here. And these were chestnuts brought in yesterday, October 15th. Um, right now, the oldest chestnuts we have are like October 10th. Um, so we, you know, fairly, fr or very fresh inventory. Um, but what I do is, I, there's condensation on them as soon as they come in here. And so I let them sit for two days before I put them then in plastic bags. We don't want the chestnuts to dry out. Um, also, um, this is a thin plastic so it can breathe a little bit, it's, you know, a little bit. It has some permeability um, to air, but I don't want also um, the chestnuts to, you know, still be exposed to more pathogens than necessary. Um, chestnuts are a living nut seed and they are breathing. Um, there's respiration process going on 
and when I say breathing, they're not um, with lung breathing, of course. But there's a respiration process going on, and they use oxygen and give off CO2. And there's been some studies done if you can you can store things longer if you get oxygen down to like a four percent level, or you can store it even longer at a lower temperature, but they found that there's some off taste if the oxygen got too low. So that 4%, I don't think I'm anywhere approaching those, but I'm not looking at long-term storage needs here either because we move our inventory out pretty quickly because we have uh, many long-time customers and we keep getting more every year. So um, I'm not increasing the orchard size. I don't want to work more as I get older. So this is how we store them and you know if you can mimic you know these conditions at home you can store chestnuts for two or three months if you need to no problem so uh, that gives you a full um, you know view of our um, from harvest to refrigeration from here I guess the only thing I'll add when we take these out there will also be condensation on cold chestnuts so I usually get them out the night before we ship like 10 o'clock at night and um, the other night I worked at the 3 30 in the morning we're doing labels um, and um, you know we got those chestnuts out after midnight but then by morning the condensation is dried off and we can ship a, a, a chestnut that's at room temperature or outdoor temperature anyway not cold um, and not have them um, you know giving off a bunch of water inside of a cardboard box that doesn't hold up too well. Anyway, um, so from there we weigh each order as we go. And we shipped 149 packages of chestnuts, about 1,500 pounds of chestnuts out yesterday on our first day of shipping. But we haven't sent out our email broadcast yet because we've still been busy with harvest. I still... Um, have a bunch of chestnuts to wash and sort still and um, I'll be done by 8 o'clock tonight so um, we'll um, you know get our chestnuts out to you as quickly as we can thanks for watching and supporting our family farms